It's obvious that tents, sleeping bags, and sleeping pads will make a big difference when it comes to enjoying a backpacking trip. But what if I told you that there's six items that cost under $20 that are just as important? Some of these items you might have never heard of before, and then some of them you might have, but you need to put a little bit more thought into. I'm a big fan of a low pack weight, but for years I took it too far using titanium shepherd hooks and titanium V stakes. They're very lightweight, but easily pull out in anything but the best soil. Even tent stakes that come with high-end expensive tents like this one from Sea to Summit aren't very good and don't have a ton of holding power. And for that reason, I recommend investing in some really high-end tent stakes that are gonna get the job done even if you're in tough soil. My favorite tent stakes are from MSR, the MSR Groundhog, and then this big aluminum one. The design of these tent stakes doesn't really matter. What really matters with them is the length. I've tested out all these tent stakes, the Shepherd Hook, the V stake, the one that comes with the Sea to Summit tent, and I found that those ones all pull out a lot quicker and it's likely because of their shorter length. I tested out all these tent stakes by putting them in the ground at a 45 degree angle, attaching a guy line and then just slowly leaning back. If I really encountered a lot of resistance and I started pulling on a little bit, the shepherd hook came out super easily. Same with the V hook and the sea to stomach tent stake. And the big reason why is because of the length. These other two tent stakes, the MSR Groundhog and the big long aluminum one, really held their ground, especially this long aluminum one. I had to really put all my weight into it and start kind of pulling on it before it even started moving. Drop a comment if you use this next item because I have never seen anyone else on trail using this and I think it's one of the most useful items on this list. It's an absorbent cloth, specifically a Swedish cloth. Compared to pack towels and microfiber cloths, Swedish cloths absorb 10 to 30 times more moisture and then squeeze out to being almost their original weight. I use the Swedish cloth for three things. Number one is wiping off condensation from the inside of my tent and then wiping rain off the outside in order to not carry as much water weight when I'm backpacking. The second thing is to use it as a pot grabber when the handles of my pot are really hot when I'm cooking food. And then the third thing is in order to wash myself. So I'll bring some water away from the water source in order to not contaminate it and then use a Swedish cloth to give myself a little bit of a sponge bath. Like I said, super useful item and weighs very, very little. I'll have links to this as well as all the other gear in this video down in the video description so you guys can check it out for yourself. I've heard that a lot of people have trouble sleeping in the backcountry because of the noises that they hear around them. They think that every sound is danger lurking around their tent. I'm the same way, if I hear a stick crack, I think it's a bear trying to rip me apart. So for that reason, I use earplugs and the earplugs block out all the noise, whether that's a squirrel that's scampering around or even a bear just sniffing my tent. Most likely anything that's outside of my tent doesn't want anything to do with me inside my tent. So I'd rather just not hear the noise. Even more likely, are people snoring around you in the campsite or sleeping on super loud sleeping pads. So that's another reason where earplugs are really gonna come in handy. They'll block out all that noise. Even things like loud frogs, if you're sleeping by a pond, can get really loud and keep you awake at night. So do yourself a favor and try bringing a pair of earplugs on your next backpacking trip. It's made a world of difference for me on my trips. I love when I come across companies that are designing cool products that fill a need for backpackers or solve a unique problem. The sponsor of today's video, Garage Drone Gear, is the best place to find this kind of gear because they're constantly helping these kind of companies bring products to market. Gear like my favorite trowel, my favorite camp socks, and a unique repair kit that I'll take a look at in closer detail at the end of this video. A lot of what I think is the really cool, innovative gear at Garage Drone Gear is found in their backpacking accessories page. And I'll have a link to that in the video description so you guys can go check it out. Thanks to Garage Drone Gear again for sponsoring this channel and this video. This next item is key if you're someone who's prone to blisters. I'm lucky and I don't really get blisters that often, but I've helped tons of people deal with them and Luco tape has been a game changer and a lifesaver while out on trail. There's three reasons why it works so good and I'll explain those as I put some Luco tape on right now because I do have a little bit of a hot spot that I'm dealing with and I'm gonna use some Luco tape in order to address that. First of all, it rips really easily. So you don't really need to bring scissors with you. I will still bring scissors sometimes in order to cut the corners off. It makes it so that it doesn't fall off as easily. But the second thing is that it does stick really easily to your skin. So even if you're kind of wet and moist or you're backpacking for a lot of days, if you just kind of rub it on a lot, then it's gonna stay on your skin even, even if you showered or something like that. I've had Luco tape stay on people's skin for up to five days before. The third thing is that it's amazing how compact is it. It doesn't take up as much space as athletic tape. And I have a whole roll around this little piece of plastic that pr will probably last me the next three or four years. 
Everyone packs their pack differently, but I think my way is the best, and I wouldn't be sharing this with you if I didn't truly believe that. It's a waterproof system that optimizes space and helps keep the shape of your pack so that it's comfortable against your back. The key to the system is a Nilo Flume pack liner. It's lightweight, waterproof, and fits perfectly into most packs. The way I use it is I put the Nilo Flume liner inside the bag, and then I stuff either my quilt or sleep bag loose inside of that so it fills up the bottom of my pack. After that, I'll put in my sleeping pad, my pillow, as well as all the clothes I have, either loose or inside of a stuff sack. If there's anything else that you want to keep dry, just put that inside there and then twist up the top of the pack liner and then tuck it down the side. I've used this system on really rainy trips like when I was on the West Coast Trail and it kept everything inside of my pack super dry. It worked well on this trip as well on the Trans Catalina Trail where I got a little bit of rain. It's a system that I rely on time and time again. I've gotten gashes in packs. I've gotten holes in shoes, holes in sleeping bags. And the thing that always comes in handy in order to fix those problems is a repair kit. Breaking a buckle or a pack strap or having a big enough hole in a sleeping bag or quilt in order to lose a ton of down could be trip ending unless you have a repair kit. I've made my own repair kits with needle and thread, patch kits and tape, but I'm really liking this one from Common Gear that wraps the tape around a plastic inside and then that plastic inside has a little compartment in order to hold the needle so you don't lose it. This is the smaller size, but if you get the larger size, it even includes a compartment for all of your patch kits. So everything's in this really tight, sleek, all-in-one system. And everything that's in this repair kit from Common Gear is exactly what I would put in my own repair kit. So if you don't want to deal with putting your own together, then definitely check this one out. Go check out this video if you want to see my full gear list for all the gear I'd bring if I was going to be through hiking in 2024. I'm not. I'm essentially retired from through hiking but it's all the gear that I would use if I was gonna be through hiking, or it's a great list to check out if you're a gear nerd or just wanna be working on keeping your base weight low. Through hiking gear is usually really good for that.